Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God. This message is overdue for this channel. So I want to extend my apologies for not posting this sooner. But I have been under great spiritual attack the last several months. And I needed to deal with those things and those issues and resolve some things that I needed greater understanding about. So I had to spend some time investigating, some time in prayer. And so now I'm going to give you what I know is a much needed update as to why I changed the name of my channel from Yeshua Loves You Too to For the Most High, Jesus. Now this video, as all my other videos, are intended to inform, not to offend. I want to say that again. This video is intended to inform, not to offend. So I want to ask all of you, if you're listening, for your patience to listen to the whole thing before you make a, a, a judgment. Um, because for some of you, this may come as a shock. You'll find yourself in the place I was several months ago concerning some, well, thinking that the name or one of the names for the Most High was in any way Hebrew with regard to the name of the channel, for example, Yeshua Loves You Too. And it was after being challenged right here on YouTube in one of the comment sections, somebody said, why are you using the name of Allah? To describe Jesus in them. What are they talking about? And at first I didn't think they were talking to me. I thought maybe they had the wrong person, you know, just in an effort to hurry up and respond to something. They clicked on the wrong person. And they replied back, no, 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 I'm talking to you. Yeshua is a, is a name for Allah. I was like, what? Get out of here. Where did they get that? Well, I couldn't just dismiss them out of hand. I'm like, i got to find out if this is true or not. So I'm not a member, never was, never ascribed to the sacred name cult. That was not me. The reason that the channel was called Yeshua Loves You Too was simply because I thought, based on these so-called Hebraic teachers, that that was the Hebrew name of Jesus, and I thought, oh, this would be a great dialogue for most people who don't know that this is his Hebrew name. So I put it on my car, and I got the response I thought I would give. Most people walked up, and they said, Yeshua loves you too on it, and they said, well, what does that mean? They said, well, that means Jesus loves you too. And because they asked me, it opened a, an opportunity to witness to somebody who otherwise may not have been receptive. Hey, you walked up and asked me. <laughs> now you get the speech, you know. Now you get the pitch for Christ. So that's all it was ever for. It wasn't to be a member of some sacred name movement. And I used that for a couple of years, and then I started, you know, I was listening to off and on some different Hebraic teachers. After all, we're... We're told it is our quote-unquote Judeo-Christian faith. You've heard that term. That we have roots in, uh, or what we've been told, and actually been misled, Judaism. If you study about Judaism, you'll know that that ain't never had anything to do with Jesus. But I looked at that, and I started asking more questions. And so we've been told that the Tetragrammaton, the YHVH or the YHWH was this hidden name that was in, you know, hidden from us for all these years. And it's actually the name Yahweh was the name of, of the Most High. And, and Christians, we've ignorantly listened to these Hebraic teachers who either in ignorance and having been misled themselves are propagating this or they are practitioners of the uh, 
spirit that is behind this, all of this, of witchcraft and practicing Judaism and uh, what they call, let me get this right now, uh, the Jewish mysticism, which is a nice way of saying witchcraft, known as the Kabbalah, or Judaism. And Judaism, if you really study and break it down, is Freemasonry. And, and, and in my never-to-be-humble opinion, Freemasonry is just a way for what Jewish people call the Goyim, which is a derogatory statement against people that they consider to be Gentiles. It is a, a way for so-called Gentiles to practice witchcraft. Oh, excuse me, Judaism. So Judaism is Freemasonry. They're one and the same. If you look into it, you will see that it, uh, what I just said is true, that that statement is true. I don't have time to go off into all of that. There are people on here who have done far more wonderful studies, and I'm going to include some links down here in the description on how Judaism is Freemasonry, on how Judaism is witchcraft, uh, and Freemasonry is witchcraft. There are some people who have done some really great studies on it. I'm not going to go off into that. If you do your homework, you'll see that that's true. And so as a result, to keep this simple, in discovering that the Yah names and all these Yah derivatives actually came from Chaldean, which me, uh, which mentioned the word moon god. The moon god is Allah. And so when I found out Yah was the derivative of all these different things from the ancient mystery Babylon religions, I had to take a step back. But let me tell you what really, even though that person sparked my curiosity and started me to look into it, now I know why that happened. None of, none of these things that happen in our life are an accident. The steps of the righteous man are ordered by the Lord. That person caused me to start thinking about it and looking into it, but also I started having satanic, demonic attacks like never before in my life. And the reason was, you know, I'm thinking, why wouldn't you think this? If Yahweh is the name of the Most High, then we need to call out to his name and worship his name. Right? Why wouldn't you? It's the name of the Most High. That's what we've been told. But it's not true. So I added that name to my worship. And in doing so, shortly after, I started having supernatural, satanic visitation. Never happened to me before, with the exception of a few experiences, maybe in 30 years, maybe four times with sleep paralysis. I didn't even know what it was. I thought it was just like a bad dream where, you, you know, because you were asleep, your body goes into a certain level of paralysis when you're asleep so that when you were dreaming, you wouldn't injure yourself by acting out your dream. Well, there's one level of that that's totally normal and natural, and then there's the one where you literally become sort of semi-conscious or maybe even fully conscious, and you still can't move because there's this satanic being that is on top of you trying to hold you down, in some cases trying to keep you from breathing. Definitely, they always seem to cover your mouth so you can't speak. And you can feel this energy. If you've never had it happen to you, I, I really can't describe it other than you feel this heaviness, you feel this energy that you know is not good. And as a result, what I found is if I think the name of Jesus, that will free my mouth to speak the name of Jesus, and then that thing is gone. And so when these attacks started happening, I'm calling on Jesus like there's no tomorrow. They leave. But I'm wondering what's going on. What am I doing this different? Did I bring something into my house that's cursed? I'm looking around trying to figure out what is going on. 
And once this person challenged me about Yeshua being one of the names of Allah, the moon God, and I started looking into and realized they were telling the truth, and I realized I had added this false name to my worship, the name of Yahweh, and any of those derivatives, I said, no wonder. Let me give you one account of one of the d demonic attacks I had. I was laying in my bed. It was the afternoon. I was sleeping. And the room was sort of semi-dark. It wasn't completely dark. It was still enough light that you could look around and kind of see objects in the room. But it was it was nice and dim. And I'm sleeping, and I feel what feels like a serpent coiling up my leg. I could physically feel it. It woke me up. But in my mind, while my eyes were still closed and I was sleeping, I could see this entity coming as a serpent that was fiery, like it was literally on fire. And it was coming, coiling up my right leg. Now, I could see this in my mind with my eyes closed like my eyes were wide open. So I call on the name of Jesus because at the same time, I'm beginning to experience sleep paralysis, this heaviness that I talked about. So I think Jesus, my mouth is freed. I speak Jesus, and this thing gets up off me instantly. I sit up, and I'm not trying to be funny. I could see this energy, this Okay, let me see if I can describe it for you. Some of you may have seen the movie Predator. When the the uh, Predator was invisible, if it moved, you still could kind of see the movement of the being. It was like that. Or you know how you look down a highway on a hot day and you see the heat radiating off the ground and you can see this movement? That's what it looked like. I could see that in my room. I knew that that entity was like less than three feet from my bed. It was at the foot of my bed. When he jumped up off me, here's what my first impression was. He was stunned. It was like he was surprised. He backed up. And then I said, Jesus, again, and he was gone. The reason I think that entity was stunned was because I had been calling on one of the names of Satan and worshiping it. So here these things start happening to me. And these entities get stunned when they get here because they're going, wait a minute, she prays in the name of Satan and we come to give her a visitation, which must be what she wants because she's been praising the name of Satan. And, she, and they get met with the name of Jesus. So this is one of the reasons I feel it's so imperative for me to post this because I don't want any other Christians doing this because you got all these boneheads out here telling you that Yahweh is the name of the Most High. And I'm going to call them boneheads because they did what I did, a bonehead move. I didn't research it. I just believed these so-called Hebraic teachers, right? Well, why would they lead us astray? I failed on that. I get an F. Because I wasn't a good Berean. I should have researched it before I started using it. I won't make that mistake again. So I'm letting you know because I don't want you making the same mistake. And I've contacted some other Christians that are out here posting stuff on YouTube talking about Yahweh this and Yahweh that. And I'm challenging them. Yahweh is not the name of the Most High. That stuff comes from the Kabbalah. It is witchcraft. Any former Satanist that has converted and become a believer will tell you if they practiced that stuff and got into it, the name of Yahweh is the name of Satan. So when I started running across those videos of Satanists either People who were Satanists laughing at the fact that Christians don't know that they're calling on the name of Satan. Or former Satanists saying, y'all need to wake up. This is not the name of the Most High. It's in their Jewish mysticism and their little witchcraft charts. 
part of the tetragrammaton, uh, or excuse me, the tetragrammaton is in a lot of these charts and stuff that they use for worshiping the devil. There's plenty of videos right here on YouTube. As I said, I'm going to put a couple of good ones in the links here that do a breakdown on the name and where it came from and that it is Satan. So I changed the name of the channel from Yeshua Loves You Too because any of those derivatives from that are not correct. Did you know that the New Testament was written in Greek? It was not written in Hebrew. So when the angel of the Lord came and he said, you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. The angel of the Lord said the name from the gate directly and straight, that his name is Jesus. Because in Greek, that's exactly what it is. The iota always had the J sound. We've been told it didn't have it, but it did. The iota had a rule where it had a hard sound and a soft sound. If the iota was followed by the, uh, a vowel, it always took on the hard J sound. So the J sound was always there. They added the hook to it later to make it a separate letter. But originally, it still had that rule. So the, let me see if I pronounce it right here, make sure I pronounce it right. Iesus, okay, which is the Greek, always had the iota. And with the vowel that followed it, it was pronounced in English, Jesus. It has always been Jesus. So we've been sold a bill of goods. Scriptural reference for you shall call his name Jesus, again, written in Greek, Matthew 121. And remember, Matthew was the book that was written to the Hebrews. First book to the Jew first, the Greek. Uh, Mark 1.1. 1, 1 the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Acts 4, 10 through 12. Let it be known to all of you, the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, Hebrews 2, 9, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave, oh, excuse me, uh, actually that's the wrong scripture, I'm thinking, of, I'm thinking about Revelation 1, 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave, uh, Hebrews 2, 9 would be, we see that Jesus was made a little lower than the angels. And God has crowned him with glory and honor. That's in Hebrews 2.9. Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, Romans 1.1. 1, 1, and we could just go on and on. His name is Jesus. Let me go to Philippians. I'm going to start at chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross. Wherefore God has 
highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, <coughs> excuse me, the devil is a liar. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Ain't no getting around that. <coughs> Acts 4.11, for this is a stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The Bible says that God has given him a name that is above every name. Right there in Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. He's given Jesus a name that is above every name. Because you have people that run around saying, well, his name, the Most High's name is really the, the I Am. Okay. I would argue that it's more of a description than a name. Okay. If you came to me and you say, What's your name? I said, D I am. You probably, I know you'd look at me funny, but it's more of a description. Let me show you what the Bible says the name of the Most High is. <clears throat> I would encourage you to go to John, the eighth chapter. I would probably start reading at verse 31. I would read the whole chapter, really, if you want to get the whole, because this is a whole declaration from beginning to end in this chapter. It's really beautiful, uh, the, who Jesus is. Because nobody can forgive sins but God. And the chapter starts out with Jesus forgiving the woman that was taken in adultery. He says, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Okay. Uh, then Jesus declares he's the light of the world, and that no man can be in darkness if they uh, follow him. And then he declares that the truth will make you free. And if you continue in his word, you're his disciples indeed. And the Jews go back and forth with him about being the seed of Abraham. And he tells them, you're of your father the devil. And that's a brief synopsis of that chapter. I want to get down to the end. And let's start at verse 48. Now, they've had this dialogue where Jesus has declared to them, your father is the devil. He's a liar and the father of it. He says, but I know God and I came forth from him. So I'm the only one that really has the right to declare who he is because I know him. And we come to verse 48. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not, well, that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judges. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead and the prophets. And thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets which are dead? Whom makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. 
Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Jesus declared, before Abraham was, I am. It is the same I am there that is over there in the Old Testament when God told Moses, you tell the people, I am sent you, or you tell Pharaoh, I am sent you. I am. The same one. And they knew what he was saying because they took up stones to stone him for what they considered to be blasphemy. And yet right here in the same passage, there's declaration after declaration of Jesus declaring who he is and demonstrating who he is. And one of those examples is right here at the end of the passage where it says, and Jesus hid himself. Now, wait a minute. How could he hide himself when he's in the midst of all these people who are looking right at him and took up a stone to stone him? And the Bible says, and he went out of the temple going through the midst of them and so passed by. You are witnessing in this passage a miracle where Jesus has <laughs> hid himself or you could say disappeared in front of their eyes and went right past them. Demonstrating that he was God. Couldn't none of them do that. So Jesus declares that he is the I am. So this is why I changed the name of the channel to For the Most High Jesus. The Most High is Jesus. As evidenced by not only this passage of scripture, but many others, and one of which I referred to already, where he has been given a name that is above every name. We know that the Bible says that Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. He has been given the name that is above every name. So even if you wanted to argue that the name of the Most High was the I Am, what do you do with this passage of Scripture that declares Jesus' name is above that name? There's no salvation found in any other name. The Bible has made it clear. The Bible says you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Praise the Lord. It's also to be noted that Paleo-Hebrew had a J sound. There was no Y in Paleo Hebrew. See, we've been we've been sold a bill of goods. If there was no Y in Paleo Hebrew, then then the name of the Most High cannot be Yahweh. Let me go to a brief explanation that I have put on my website on why I changed the website's name from Yeshua water to for the Most High Jesus. To keep it simple, I discovered that the so-called Hebrew name of Jesus, Yeshua, Yahshua, or any of the Yah name are not the name of the Most High God, but in fact the name of Allah. There are two different Hebrew languages. The one that is commonly used today, which is arguably mixed with Yiddish, which came from Babylonian Aramaic which was adopted by the Hebrews when they were captives, were taken captive to Assyria and Babylon. As a result, the Aramaic replaced the ancient Paleo-Hebrew. In ancient biblical Hebrew did not have the four-letter tetragrammaton, the four letters commonly known as the name of Yahweh. And upon deeper study, I discovered that these four modern Hebrew letters came from Babylonian Aramaic. They did not appear in the original scripture. Moses did not write them. 
and they are not a part of biblical Paleo-Hebrew. Moses' writings occurred around 1446 to 1406 B.C. in a mixture of Phoenician, Egyptian, and Old Paleo-Hebrew. Modern Hebrew, which is shown in the Tetragrammaton, did not exist until around 400 to 300 B.C. and descended from the Aramaic, which did not exist until 900 B.C. Therefore, it is an impossibility that Moses wrote the four-letter Tetragrammaton. Upon further examination, I discovered all of Strong's Concordance Dictionary of Hebrew words are actually taken from the Aramaic, Babylonian, Chaldean, or Syrian languages, not true biblical Hebrew. To keep it simple, the Israelites adopted Chaldean, Babylonian, Aramaic, Syrian words and religious beliefs. The very word Chaldean means moon or moon worshippers. In short, no derivative of the word or name Yah was used by Jesus or the disciples in ancient Paleo-Hebrew. Jesus is his name. Jesus said, if you had known me, you should have known my father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. John 14, 7. As a result of my study, I've decided not to use Yeshua or any of the Yahs to describe or call on Jesus. They do not apply to him. His name is Jesus. So that's why I changed the name of the channel. This is what has been occupying my time for the last few months, being prayerful about this, seeking the Lord about this, and dealing with the fact that I missed it on this concerning the so-called Hebrew name. Very interesting that the New Testament was written in Greek and Jesus' name was never written in Hebrew. <laughs> Very interesting. That is a fact. It was written in Greek by the disciples, by the apostles. And if Jesus ever wrote out his name, he wrote it out in Greek because it never came out in Hebrew. Very interesting. So be prayerful about it, beloved. One thing I can absolutely confirm, as the Bible says of the scripture, let me find that real quick. And they overcame him. And that is speaking, the they there is speaking of the believers. And the hymn there is speaking of Satan. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And it says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. I hope I'm not your enemy because I tell you the truth. But... Yah, Yah, any of those derivatives are not the name of the Most High. I'm giving you my testimony that by adding that name to my worship, I began to have satanic visitation. That is my confirmation that that is not the name of the Most High. And the Lord allowed me to experience that, to be able to be a witness to you that that is not his name. I hope that this has been uh, valuable to you and that now that you know the truth, the truth has made you free. Be blessed, beloved of the Most High God, in Jesus' name, amen.